Alright guys, welcome back. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Austin Andrews. I'm 18 years old, live in southern Idaho, just like to fly fish. But anyways, today we are going to be tying a pretty sweet little lake trout streamer. It's a little articulated jig lake trout streamer. Um, super, super simple bug to tie. Um, but really, really effective. It's just... You know, a little spawn, spawn shank with a tungsten bead and a little A-Rex hook in the back. It's pretty much a little jig articulated woolly bugger with uh, a marabou collar. So it's super, super simple bug. Um, yeah, let's let's get going. So starting out with an A-Rex SA280 in a size one. Um, already pinched barb down and everything, so. Just get our thread going on that. Cut that tag end off. And then we're going to use some ginger marabou. Um, and I mainly tie these in either ginger or white. Uh, for some reason, the lake trout in our area, they, they really like those colors. They're not too, I mean, occasionally chartreuse as well, but everything else are not, not super keen on eating. Um, yeah, we're just going to choose a feather with really nice aligned tips, um, just like you would a woolly bugger. And I'm just going to tie that into the back. And I usually like it to make it a bit longer than the shank on this hook, just because it's got a fairly short shank on the hook. So I make it decently long tail. Just going to get that secured. And I also like just cover it all the way up almost to the eye. That way it gives me a bit of body, uh, so I'm not, not using so much dubbing. Cut that off. Cover it up. And then what I like to do just to add a little bit of flash, so I have some gold flashaboo here. Um, I'm just going to take two fibers of it. There we go. two fibers of our flashaboo and this is just you know gives it just a tiny tiny bit of flash and cut those tips even and when I tie it in what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie those two strands in on that side And I like to tie it all the way up to the hook eye just to secure it. Give her a few more wraps. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do pretty much the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to pull it my, in my direction and tie it back. So it should be pretty good on that side. So you can see. And then what we're going to do is we are going to pull it back. And cut it so it just just extends beyond the tail just slightly so that's that's our flash for this fly um, like I said super super simple um, but it just just adds a little bit of flash something for the fish to look at uh, just, just spices it up a bit you know but for the body, what I like to do is I have this really, really nice cape. Um, we're just going to come in here and take some, uh, some of those longer, webbier feathers. And that's what we're going to use for our body. There's a good one. We're just going to pluck that one off. So it's one of the longer, webbier ones. Uh, we're going to be using all this stuff down here. So this one's a good one to choose. And what I like to do is I just like to pull all those fibers back, just flare them out a bit. And then what I do, and I so when I tie this in, I want already some fairly long fibers. Um, so we can kind of measure that length, make sure we got these nice, nice long fibers on it. Um, 
And that's where we're going to tie it in. We're not going to use any of the smaller stuff. It is not, not worth our time. So I just cut off the tip on that and then cut off the fibers. Um, so it gives something for that thread to grip onto. You don't cut the fibers completely all the way off. You leave, leave little stubs. Uh, and that way the thread really grips onto it. And that's, that's not going to come out. So, but then we're going to just dub all the way up the hook. And I just use this brown rabbit fur dubbing. Um, just super, super generic. We're just going to do a, I mean, we don't have to use a lot of dubbing because we already wrapped that marabou up. So we're just going to kind of cover it up with this dubbing. We don't have to build much of a body. So just nice thin, thin dubbing with noodle. And start at the back. Just work your way up. Keep adding dubbing as you're going up. Let's get it all the way to the eye. Okay. So we've dubbed all the way to the eye of the hook. Now we're just going to wrap this feather. And so when I do this, I always like to just give it one wrap at the back, one full wrap without moving it forward. And that way it just kind of almost gives a, uh, I don't want to say collar, but it gives pretty much a collar before the tail. Um, so yeah, we're just going to wrap all that forward until we're out of the eye. So we essentially just did a woolly bugger right there. And then when I tie this off, um... Don't throw the rest of this feather away because we're going to be using the same feather on the uh, the front part of this fly. And the reason I do that is because you notice as you go down the feather from the tip to the bottom, the fibers get longer. So we're going to get rid of all those fibers that got trapped forward. There we go. But as you notice on the feather, the fibers get longer as you go down. And so the reason I'm using the same feather is because I want to maintain that same taper um, throughout the fly of that hackle length. Um, so now what we're going to do is use a, well, almost forgot to whip finish. First thing we're going to do is whip finish. <laughs> Just whip finish right there. Cut off for thread. So, yeah, pretty much woolly bugger. Just clean up a few fibers. Not too keen on being there. There we go. So now, um, oh gosh, sorry. We are going to get a jig shank. Wherever I put them, there they are. And I just like to use a spawn fly fish. Uh, I use 60s and 90s, but for this one, we're going to be using the 60. Um, does it really matter that much? No, it's just just whatever you prefer. It's, these are the 20 millimeter jig shanks. All we're gonna do is put it in the vise. There we go. Um, and then some 5.5 millimeter tungsten beads going to be the weight in this fly. So for these lake trout here in Idaho, um, in the early spring during ice off, they are still super, super lethargic. They don't, they don't want to move around a whole lot. So I kind of like this fly because I can, you know, cast it out there, let it sink, um, let it hit the bottom and just kind of bounce it along the bottom. You know, those lake trout are still sitting in the rocks, so it's nice to just have that and be able to jig it along the bottom, and they, they usually hammer it, so. 
Now we got that 5.5 millimeter tungsten bead on there. And then we're going to take our back part of the, the fly. Let me adjust this camera a bit. Not super center. There we go. So we're going to take the back part of the fly. And I like doing it hook point up because like I said, we're going to be in the rocks. And those rocks are sticky. They like, they like to take flies. So we're just going to put that in hook point up close off our shank. It's the only downside about doing a hook point up is you can't set it in that slot so it likes to fall down. Yep, just close off that shank, make sure it's nice and secure. And then what I like to do is I just try and work my thread up that um, loop on the shank as far as I can. So I like to just kind of close close that up, that gap in between the, uh, the eye of the hook and the shank. I don't want too much of a gap showing there. Just makes for a cleaner fly in the end. So I just slowly work my way up with that thread. And that is probably good. So, still using that same feather that we used from last time. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to come in here, cut off some of those, those fibers, but we still leave a little bit. We still leave a little bit of stubble there. Probably can't see that too well. Um, but yeah, I like, to, I like to leave just a little bit of a little tiny bit of the fibers there that way the thread really has something to grip onto we're going to tie that in there and then same thing just same dubbing dub all the way up now with this one on the front part we will have to be using a bit more dubbing um, just slightly thicker dubbing noodles, uh, just so we can build up that body a bit more. Otherwise, if this body is a lot skinnier than, than the back hook body, we'll get an uneven taper with our hackle. Which is not, not what we want. It doesn't, doesn't make for a super clean bug. dubbing. And the reason I use this dubbing is just because of how easy it is to work with. It's just, you know, super, super easy to work with. You can create super nice, fine dubbing loops, I mean, uh, noodles with it. It's just very easy, easy dubbing to work with. And that's honestly why, why I like using this fly so much. Because even though you do ride that hook point up and all that stuff, you'll you still lose it in the rocks. Like that's it's just the way it is. So this is a nice pattern because you can tie a lot of them. You can tie them pretty quick. It's not not a long pattern to tie. I cannot say enough how much I love this Norvice auto bobbin. Like, even when it comes to stuff like, you know, this dubbing noodle, it's it's really nice because you can pull that out, you can get that out of the way, you can dub all the way up, and then you can pull that thread right back in. So you still have proper thread control, but you're not sitting there wasting your time like winding it back up. Is it? does it does it for you so super super handy handy tool it's a fun one really enjoy tying with it so and as we wrap this hackle up we're gonna do the same thing that we did in the back hook you know we're going to do that one one wrap at the back and then start working our way forward 
it gets gets a little tricky when we're working with these super long fibers because they they like to get trapped. Um, so you gotta gotta be careful. Make sure you're not trapping any of those fibers. And so we are just going to take it all the way to the front. Tie that off. Trim off our, our excess. Now, if you'd like, you can fish it like that. Um, I've, I've done it, but I like to um, get another piece of marabou. And I like to put just a marabou collar on it, um, kind of like you would with a, you know, a spay fly. Just do palmer that marabou. Um, so once again, we're looking for a good, good feather with nice line tips. Nice, nice fibers. So that one's, that one's going to be it. And when I'm working with this, what I like to do is I like to come in here and take off those bottom fibers. They're not, all they do is get in the way. We're not going to be using those. So that way now when we palmer it, we have a nice place to grab that marabou feather. And it's not, not going to be trapping any any fibers. So I see a lot of guys when they uh, palm or marabou, they just they just grab the feather and it it pulls those fibers away. Um, and that way you get trapped fibers. You don't get all the fibers that you want wrapped in there. And so when we wrap that in, uh, I like to go pretty far down the feather just because that way we are already into the long fibers of the marabou feather. And so that way we won't have any any short fibers giving us a hard time. Just gonna go through there and just kind of trim up all those um, messy fibers that got trapped from tying in the tips. All right. So now I have that that marabou tied in, and all we're going to do. Just give it two wraps is all I all I want. This marabou. There we go. And tie off that marabou stem. Pull it tight, make sure everything's on there nice and secure. Give it a few more wraps. And then cut off that marabou stem. ARX hooks are sharp, just be careful with that, you'll poke yourself. But now all we're going to do is we're just going to do a whip finish. Now I'll also tie these um, a bit smaller. So a lot of the times I'll be using a size, you know, size 4 A-Rex SA280 hook um, and a micro jig shank, which is what I believe I did on this one. So just a bit smaller for, you know, if the fish are being kind of picky, they don't want the the big one, then I'll go to a small one. But yeah, it's a super, super simple, simple pattern. And it's it's not only for lake trout. Like I would, I would fish this for bass. I would tie this in like a dark brown. Um, it'd be a pretty sweet crawdad fly. Um, yeah, you can tie. I've tied them in olive and fished them here on my local rivers. Caught browns, cuts, rainbows with them. So super versatile little little fly, and it's a a good one. Good one to tie. Like I definitely definitely recommend having a few of these in your box because, like I said, if you come up to a place where you're a little 
worried about losing flies, that's a great one to chuck because, you know, it's a super, super fast tie and doesn't doesn't use a lot of materials. So it's just it's kind of a you know, kind of a burner fly, but it catches fish and it's it's pretty darn good at that. But yeah, I mean, thank you guys for come come coming in coming in and watching this. Um, check out the other the other YouTube videos on the Norvice channel. We got some really, really talented tires. Um, showing off some really, really cool bugs. Um, and doing videos, so go watch their videos. Uh, go learn how to tie their patterns, and have a nice rest of your day. Thank you.